The Mini-Star and BioStar use positive pressure, which gives you superior adaptation to your model, ensuring the accuracy and fit of your appliance. These machines can significantly reduce your lab expense by increasing the variety of appliances you can do in-house. Most of the Technique videos in our Resource Center feature the BioStar because that's what we use in our commercial lab at Great Lakes. For most dental practices, the Mini-Star is ideal. You can use the Mini-Star to fabricate the same extensive variety of appliances that you can with the BioStar. The Holly Retainer can be designed to include a tooth or teeth within the acrylic foundation. A plastic tooth of desired shade and size is selected to fill the edentula space. Usually these plastic teeth require some adjustment. Adjust the preformed pontic using a carbide taper burr and a lab handpiece. Trim along mesial and distal sides of the pontic to fit it within the edentula area. Trim along the base of the plastic tooth to adjust height. Incisal adjustments are only made at the end of the appliance fabrication process. Check the size of the trim pontic to the edentula space. Also check alignment to the arch and opposing model. Cut a groove into the lingual area of the plastic tooth with a carbide cutting burr and lab handpiece. This will increase tooth to retainer acrylic adherence. With medium soft hygienic base plate wax, relieve interdental undercuts along the cervical crowns of adjacent teeth to the ponic. Also apply a small layer of wax to the facial or labial two surfaces. Remove excess wax with a lab knife. Wax should remain at undercut areas. Smooth with a torch. Place Pontic on model to confirm fit after undercuts are removed. Adjust Pontic if needed. Apply separator material to the edentulous area of the model. Spread separator evenly with the brush. Sticky wax is used to stabilize the Pontic to the model. Heat one end of the sticky wax rod and apply it to connect the model to the pontic. Using the salt and pepper technique, apply resin to flow around the base of the pontic. Create a saddle-like foundation over the edentulous part of the arch to stabilize the alignment of the pontic. Add layers of powder and liquid resin to cover the cervical crown of the pontic. Remove excess acrylic resin from the model. Resin should only be within the pontic area and extend slightly onto the palatolingual tissue. Place the model and acrylic resin into a humid pressure pot for 15 minutes. Pressure should be adjusted to approximately 20 psi. At the end of the curing cycle of the resin, evacuate the pressure from the pot. Remove model and cured acrylic. 
Carefully remove the Pontic from the model with a lab knife. Also remove wax from the plastic Pontic. Trim the acrylic saddle of the Pontic with a carbide taper burr and lab handpiece. Acrylic should extend to the mesial and distal ends of the Pontic. Also it should extend 4 to 5 millimeters along the palatal tissue. The thickness over the tissue is about 1 millimeter. The facial acrylic can be trimmed to the gingival tooth contours. The wire work is fabricated. Clasp and labial bow designs can be made. Apply liquid separator to the model except along the facial surfaces where the wires will be waxed in place. Place the Pontic on the model and secure its position with sticky wax on the facial surface. Also stabilize the wires to the model with sticky wax or hygienic base plate wax. Adjust pellets within the cup to elevate the model. For a holly retainer, the top tooth surfaces should be at the height of the cup's rim. Fill the gap between the model and the cup's rim with pellets. Sweep excess pellets with a 1 inch brush. Pellet level should be against the occlusal tooth surfaces and heel of model and extend to the rim of the cup. Make sure the pellets are removed from the cup's rim. Select a 2 mm biocryl disc. A variety of colors and pattern designs are available. Clamp the biocryl disc onto the chamber. Identify the material's heating time or Biostar code and enter it into the machine. Swing the lamp over the clamp material to start the heating cycle. With 45 seconds remaining in the heating cycle, mix monomer liquid and polymer powder to a maple syrup consistency with a number 7 spatula. With approximately 20 to 30 seconds remaining in the heating cycle, apply the mixed resin to flow along wires, as well as the acrylic tooth. Heating cycle and resin application should conclude at the same time. At the end of the heating cycle, swing the lamp to the back of the machine. Swing the chamber over the model in the pellet cup and lock the chamber in place and cool under pressure for two and a half to three minutes. During this phase, the applied resin will cure. At the end of the cooling and curing cycle, evacuate the pressure from the chamber. Unlock the chamber and clamped material. Swing open the chamber and remove formed material and model from the pellet cup. Some pellets may stick to the formed material. Remove pellets with lab knife. Then loosen the wires that were held in place with wax along the facial surface of the model and remove formed plastic. Using a carbide cutting burr and lab handpiece, cut out the retainer from the disc. Start by cutting along the back of the appliance at the first or second molar reference. Then cut along the lingual cusps of the posterior teeth and near the incisal edges of the anteriors. Caution must be used around wires that are embedded in plastic. At the pontic, cut around the facial side of the tooth surface. Once the cut has been made in the plastic, remove the retainer from the disc. The posterior segment is scalloped one and one half millimeters above the gingival margins to rest against the cervical crown surface and rounded to the interdental papilla height along the anterior dentition. This is accomplished by using a carbide cone or taper burr and a lab handpiece. At the pontic, do not trim into the plastic tooth. 
The back or heel of the retainer is often tapered forward near the mid-palatal area. Maintain plastic contact against the last tooth on each side of the arch and taper acrylic forward about one quarter of an inch. The formed retainer acrylic that caps the top of the pontic is removed using the nose of the taper burr. Do not grind into the plastic tooth. Then carefully remove the plastic that is over the tooth and level retainer acrylic to the interdental papilla height. Finally, the scalloped posterior and rounded anterior segments are blended into the retainer body. A sandpaper mandrel with a 3 inch strip of 150 grit sandpaper is used with a lab handpiece to smooth trim surfaces. Use medium handpiece speed to smooth trimmed surfaces. This retainer is pumiced and polished using the same procedures outlined for the upper holly retainer. The pontic should be pumiced and polished as well. These technique videos along with the other information on the Resource Center, can show you how to get the most from your machine and how to ultimately take control of your lab bill. Maximize the potential of your Mini-Star.